Uh, let's see how many of, of these questions we can get answered, how much detail we can get filled in as we are going to be joined here by uh, lead investigative reporter from WUSA 9. Eric Flack is with us. Flack, what a day, sir. What a day. How are whoa, you? Whoa, what a difference a couple months makes. I, uh, I did not have this on my bingo card when I woke up this morning, but it certainly came together quickly. Um, you're someone who has a pretty substantial bingo card, so that is surprising <laughs> to me that like this is this is this surprising to you. How do you think they were able to do this so under wraps uh, with you know the Virginia thing hanging on a lifeline, rumors of Maryland over the weekend? Like, how do you as you've been able to fill in the gaps? How did this come together so quickly? Well, I mean, I think it's a couple things. One, I think that um, it, it became clear for Ted Leonsis and his advisors on this arena deal that, um, you know, Virginia was uh, was an ever-increasing long shot. And I think, it, 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 so, you know, you had an attorney general from D.C. send a letter, uh, you know, last week saying there's going to be a huge legal challenge. Um, which might, may or may not have been successful, but the point is that it was going to be another huge obstacle to getting this vision of a Potomac Yard arena in Alexandria uh, done. And so I think he had a couple options. There was a phone call between um, Governor Moore uh, about uh, Maryland, but you know the truth is he had a deal on the table. He does have roots here in D.C. Um, we're hearing the deal. He did get a little bit more money. The mayor had offered $500 million um, when uh, the Potomac Yard deal was announced in December. Uh, we're hearing the number now is $515 million. Uh, we've got a press conference here. I'm actually in this fancy new club at, um, at Capital One, which is the kind of the vision of what uh, this renovation, I imagine, they're going to tell us is going to look like. Um, so I think everything just kind of lined up to where he realized that, you know, emotions are one thing, but business is another. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, the mayor always said we're interested in getting this done. Uh, the, the chairman of the uh, uh, chair of the D.C. Council, despite the Virginia thing, said we want to get this done. The letter from the attorney general, even as he threatened a lawsuit, says we really want to get this done. At some point, I think, and we'll find out, but I think maybe cooler heads prevailed, and they said, let's just take the money. Let's stay here in D.C. It's a good deal. It's half a billion-dollar renovation. It's going to be substantial. They're going to do some streetscape stuff outside as well so that this entire area becomes more of the destination that he kind of envisioned Potomac Yard would be, only it's going to remain here in D.C., Eric Flack, investigative reporter at WUSA 9, is with us. So when we hear this $515 million renovation to Capital One Arena, do, how much do we know about what that is going to look like uh, based off of what we saw Potomac Yards and they desired and also whatever plans we've gotten our hands on over the whatever number of years they've been talking to D.C.? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think we'll know more here at, at 6 o'clock. Uh, I've heard and spoken with people that, um, you know, say it could be fairly dramatic. They're going to have some challenges because this is a year-round use arena. So, obviously, they're going to have to do it in stages and over time. But uh, the goal, I was always told, if they were going to stay here, and this was before the Potomac Yard deal was announced, was to really change the look of Capital One, not just modernize it with the suites and, and, and those things, but really somehow change the look. So that part remains unclear. We should hear more here in a couple minutes about, you know, are we talking about just adding $500 million of suites and luxury boxes? And, you know, the, the seating inside Cap One is also very outdated in the way the seats are aligned, meaning uh, if you've been to a new arena, the higher up you go, you're still kind of close to the court. Whereas in Cap 1, as you know, and you've been in the press box, if you're up at the top, you're not just high, you're way back as well. Um, and so that's another thing that I know they wanted to address. We'll see if they're going to be able to address it. I remember the first arena I went to that had that kind of seating was in Cleveland way back in like 2011. I think I was in college covering an NCAA tournament. And I just remember like walking through some of the upper stuff and feeling like it was on a very steep cliff. And I was like, I, as someone who doesn't like ledges, 
don't right. love this. Uh, but right. I also understand the appeal once you sit down and you're like, I am high, but I'm not that far from the court. So I get it. That's um, That's so great. the practice facility is is another huge deal here. Because my thing, Eric, was always if they want to move the games, that's crazy. If you want to go and do a practice facility somewhere out where you can get a bunch of space, like I kind of get that. There's now going to be a practice facility somewhere for the Wizards in the future in the district. Do we know where that possibly could be? No, I mean, I think that's got to be one of the first questions we ask. I mean, as you know, because we've all covered this commander stadium deal, there's not a whole lot of open area in the District of Columbia. So you've got to wonder where they're going to put that. And I think those are the details that we expect to come out here. Because it's, as you said, you don't have to be a, a, you know, a geographer to figure out there's no room for it down here. So are they going to expand the sports and entertainment uh, complex? Is that the concept? Are they going to go to a totally separate location? You know, are they going to come up with a, a wild card that you know, people like us haven't thought of? You know, I, I think that that part also remains to be seen. I'm, I'm, I'm as curious as you are to hear what they have to say here in a couple minutes. Yeah, Southeast DC feels like the right thing. Just expand that. The, the, it, the land it is there. And um, as, as we mentioned, the Washington Post reported that uh, part of this deal, and I'm sure you've got this as well, part of this deal is that Monumental is actually going to be able to take over control of that. What could they not do when they didn't have control? Because I know that's been quite a point of contention. Well, I mean, I think ultimately part of the reason that Ted was so upset with the Capital One Arena was just he didn't have control of the land. Like, you know, it was a lease. He said it was a bad lease. And you're constantly, you know, needing approval to do things. You don't really, you can't really captain your own ship. I mean, if you're a guy like Ted Leonsis, you, you want to captain your own ship. Um, and so, you know, that is something that I think um, possibly was one of the things that helped get this done. I mean, again, we'll find out. But what were the, the moments where things changed? Was it control of land? What Was it, you know, um, a sweetening of the pot? Was it a collection all of the above? Was it just realizing Virginia wasn't an option? Um, you know, so um, still, still a lot to come out. For sure. And then last thing for you real quick, because I know your time is tight as you're getting set up uh, for the six o'clock presser. But uh, from your depth, uh, wealth of knowledge on on these interrelated topics, how do you think this affects the commander's pursuit of RFK? I think it's interesting. I think it's impossible to um, just uh, dissuade them. That's obviously going to be another one of my first questions for for the mayor. That's a mayor and Mendelssohn question. Are you still in an RFK? They've already said they are. Um, and, and, you know, Josh Harris was quoted out at the owners meetings and saying, we're watching what went down in Virginia. And, you know, listen, <laughs> I, I think if you saw what went down in Virginia, and we've talked about the history with Jack Ken Cook trying to build a stadium out there, mm -hmm. you know, years and years ago, that they're looking and they're saying, you know, that seems like a hassle if we can figure out something else. Um, so um, uh, I, I, I fully expect the mayor to say we are still all in on the commanders. Um, and you got to wonder if Josh Harris is seeing the way this is going. If, if he's not, you know, con continually all in on Washington, DC. I also wonder if he knew anything when he said that yesterday. Now in hindsight, you're like, you also own an NBA team. You, the, the number of people who own sports teams in DC is small. Did you know, jo we're watching what's going to happen. Wink, wink. Yeah. Uh, you, you do exactly. wonder. Uh, Eric and, Flack. And you also think DC leaders probably wanted to make sure they didn't alienate anybody over there in his camp. Yeah. And blindside them with some news. To yeah. Make sure that that, you know, stayed on the up and up with them. That's well. also, that's also probably true. Uh, Eric Flack covering all of this so well for WUSA 9. Nice enough to join us whenever news breaks on the subject. I'm sure we will be in touch, my friend. Uh, yeah, have, sure. have fun at the press conference uh, if, if such a thing exists. Uh, but we look forward <laughs> to listening to your questions and their answers. You got it. Talk all to right. you soon. That is Eric Flack. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Gates from ESPN. Yeah. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.